if f is continuous on the closed interval a comma b then there exists c belongs to the closed interval a comma b such that integral from a to b f of x dx is equals to f of c into b minus a this statement is known as mean value theorem we shall now prove this statement we are given the function f is continuous on the closed interval a comma b we know that every continuous function on the closed interval a comma b is riemann integrable on the closed interval a comma b therefore this implies f belongs to r of the closed interval a comma b that is f is a riemann integrable over the closed interval a comma b since f is a riemann integrable the function f is bounded on the closed interval a comma b because every riemann integrable function is bounded let small m and the capital m be the infimum and the supremum of the function f respectively on the closed interval a comma b therefore small m less than equals to f less than equal to capital m that is f takes every value from small m to capital m on the closed interval a comma b let us consider a less than b we all know that if f is less than or equal to g where f and g are riemann integrable on the closed interval a comma b and a is less than or equal to b then integral from a to b f less than or equal to integral from a to b g this is one of the properties of integral we preserve the same inequality here since m is less than or equal to f less than or equal to small m less than or equal to f less than or equal to capital m when we take integral we get integral from a to b small m less than or equal to integral from a to b f less than or equal to integral from a to b capital m also integral from a to b m is nothing but integral from a to b m into dx since m is a constant take it out therefore that is equal to m into integral from a to b dx that is equals to m into if we integrate dx with respect to x we get x therefore that is equal to m into x that is upper limit this is a lower limit apply upper limit therefore we get b minus we have to apply lower limit that is a therefore that is equal to m into b minus a therefore integral a to b small m is m into b minus a similarly integral from a to b capital m is capital m into b minus a therefore the above expression can be written as m into b minus a less than or equals to integral from a to b f less than or equals to capital m into b minus a m into b minus a less than or equal to integral from a to b f less than or equal to capital m into b minus a now dividing by b minus a since a is less than b that is b is greater than a b minus a is a non zero number therefore dividing by b minus a therefore we get m less than or equals to 1 by b minus a integral a to b f less than or equal to m for a not equals to b now let us consider the value of this integral namely 1 by b minus a integral a to b f of x dx as mu where mu is a number which is the value of this integral lying between the bounds m and capital m because since we have taken its value is mu therefore what happen here we have m less than or equals to mu less than or equal to capital m 
therefore mu lying between the bounds small m and capital m that implies 1 by b minus a integral a to b f of x dx is equal to mu where m lesser equals to this is mu therefore mu lesser equals to capital m that implies the integral from a to b f of x dx is equals to mu into b minus a that is b cross multiplied by b minus a therefore we get integral from a to b f of x dx is equal to mu into b minus a where mu belongs to the close interval small m comma capital m the statement says that integral from a to b f of x dx is equals to f of c into b minus a now we have mu here so far we have proved integral from a to b f of x dx is equal to mu into b minus a now we have to show that the mu is nothing but f of c where c belongs to the close interval a comma b now integral a to b f of x dx is equal to mu into b minus a where mu belongs to the close interval small m comma capital m let us call it as equation number one now our aim is to show that mu is equal to f of c where c belongs to the close interval a comma b since f is continuous on the close interval a comma b it takes every value between its bounds namely small m and capital m now let us explain this with graphical representation let us consider this x axis this is a y axis this is a close interval a to b this is the interval we are considering close interval a to b and this is the curve f which is continuous if you consider the graph in this interval a comma b where is the least value the graph starts from here and ends here the least value is this point and this point is nothing but small m in this interval where is the highest value if we take this curve the highest value is this point so that is nothing but capital m so this is small m this is capital m where will this mu lie it says that mu belongs to the close interval small m to capital m therefore mu must be from this m to this capital m or anywhere from small m to capital m in particular the function f takes the value mu lying between small m and capital m let us consider this is a point mu therefore there exists a point c belongs to the close interval a comma b this is the close interval a comma b where is c c will be anywhere from a to b let us consider c is here this is a point c such that mu is equal to f of c this mu equals to f of c where mu is from small m to capital M and C belongs to the close interval A comma B. Thus there exists a point C in this close interval A comma B such that mu equals to F of C. Let us call it as equation number 2. From 1 and 2, this is 1, this is 2. Now we are going to replace the value of mu by f of c in equation number 1. Therefore, equation 1 becomes integral from a to b f of x dx is equal to mu. What is mu? Mu is f of c. Therefore, f of c into b minus a where mu belongs to the close interval small m comma capital M. Here this f of c is called the mean value of the definite integral. Therefore this theorem is called mean value theorem.